Hello and um, welcome to the uh, LSO Masterclass for the YouTube um, Symphony Orchestra. I'm playing the trumpet with Nigel Gom um, on my left here. My name is Maurice Murphy and we'd like to start with a little bit of something from the Internet Symphony Eroica. The beginning of the piece, um, we have a few bars tacit, then a little solo for the trumpet, which I'll try and play for you now. When we did the sessions for this, um, we played it 30 times. And it was perfect every time, including the first one. But what's always intrigued me about you is how do you know how to play that tune? Because <laughs> it doesn't really say anything, you just play it. And, and it just sounds beautiful and perfect. Well, so it's, so it when, you, when you see that, what do you, what do you think? Well, I just look at it and try and phrase, try and sort out the phrasing. And um, uh, depending on what the conductor wants for the volume and, and uh, such like, I, I look at that as a that strikes me as a piece of music which because you find lots on a of film people score. lots of people would look at that and go. Which means nothing. Which means nothing. Yeah. So, and nothing. you have this ability which you're famous for your whole career of of, of playing a tune like that, like you just did, oh. and that's. Do you th are you singing it? Do you think it is a yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's what I think. Yeah. Too. yeah. Just phrasing, phrasing. So when, I, when I was young, I was um, one of my little old teachers. He used to teach me to play slow melodies, and I always had to to learn the words. If you didn't right. know the words, you couldn't play the right. tune. Okay. So you look at phrasing everything. That makes sense, because because yeah. for those of you that are going to pick the first trumpet part, or most of you will probably play that tune, what we don't want to hear is just right notes in a line. What That's Morris right. play then is far, far more than that. And, and as a tip to anybody, um, <coughs> you can do auditions for symphony orchestras, auditions for anything. You can play the fastest, flashiest piece in the world and it won't get you the job. What gets you the job is the sound you make and the way you play a tune. And the other thing about that is it's in a horrible key for the trumpet. And yeah, that's perfectly, nice. that's, that's beautifully in tune. So that's the other thing to watch. It is a very sharp key, <laughs> um, which means there's, there's sharp notes and flat notes in there for the trumpet. And yeah. You know, and you have to use the and you have to use the, you the, have to compensate the, with the compensate the with the slides. The slides. And the and biggest tip is, as Morris said, sing it, sing, sing, sing the phrase before you play yeah. it, and then try and make it sound how you'd sing. And for a start, I mean, there's only one um, dynamic in that. It's uh, it's just marked as MF, but they said it's a solo, so you play it out a little. And even though there's only one crescendo in the last bar. You have to put little, yeah, the little waves the in it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Buzz me but a few I'm notes on your mouthpiece. Buzz you a few notes. Yeah, just take your mouthpiece out and buzz a few notes. Yeah. See, people always ask me. I, I've been a friend and a colleague of Morris's for a long, long time. I used to be his next door neighbour before we worked together, and I've, yeah. you know, I had the privilege of sitting there for twenty years in this orchestra with him. <laughs> And people always ask me, how does Morris do this? You know, and it's no good asking Morris because he doesn't know. <laughs> true, true, true. But people often ask me, and it's uh, and I've you know listened and listened and listened. And when Morris plays the mouthpiece, there's hardly you hardly hear any air. Not so much buzz on the mouthpieces when we practice. And you know, I'm sort of <laughs> that side of things where there's lots of air and not a lot of sound. When Morris buzzes it, it's all <laughs> it's all sound and as he says, he's not, he's not physically the fittest way. He's never been to a gym, never worked out, and yet he can play that phrase. And the answer is because his <coughs> lips and his breathing is so efficient that everything that goes to the mouthpiece is sound. There's not much wasted air. And a very, very good thing to practice when you're playing long phrases is to play it on the mouthpiece and try and get rid of the part of the sound and concentrate on the... <coughs> so you get the most buzz. Yeah, yeah that you can. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of, the th a lot of it is in, in the breathing. <coughs> yeah, in absolutely. The breathing. I think so many people um, just breathe off the, top of the, off the top of the lungs, 
where his eye was taught to breathe down, right down there, and press. Yeah, from here. use the diaphragm. Use the diaphragm, yeah. One of the problems recording this um, is it's very heavily scored. It's very, it's very big scoring. Um, and there's, apart from, after the beautiful tune, there's, there's like little fanfare accompaniment things, which normally we were playing a good, healthy 40, but um, the composer wanted more and more and more. And that, this, this actually becomes a problem, um, especially on the lower parts. So anybody auditioning on one of the second or third trumpet parts needs to learn to really, really dig out yes. um, the low notes. And, and the same with the first one. Should we just do a bit of... Yeah. Just do that, oh, three bars of, three bars of, wherever it is, 80, 70. So those low notes need to be louder than yeah. marked. And, and, and actually, although musically it's wrong, that needs to be the loudest part of the bar each time, because that's what was asked for. As I say, it's a massive orchestration around it. Um, otherwise, it never gets heard. That's, that's the biggest problem, actually, in, in all three parts after the tune, just get, getting those rhythms through. So when you're recording this, <coughs> try and play as clearly as you can on those. And the same for the tongue figures. The, 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 what, what we want to hear is really good articulation. Okay. Tell me about this piece. Tell you about this piece. Why did you pick to do this piece? Um, because it's nice and tuneful. Yeah. It's um, it's not too hard for the students. It was um, it was edited by um, a French trumpet player Roger Boisin for C trumpet. Right. But um, we are mostly in England. We are mostly B flat players. And I find that it uh, sits very, very nicely on the piccolo A. Okay. The thing with this, this project and the piece you choose um, is the brief is it has to be a piece before copyright, which on the, on the trumpet is, is a bit of a problem because um, the B-flat trumpet, which is, is the one we all use in the orchestra most of the time, certainly in Britain, or maybe a C trumpet, which is similar, just a tiny bit smaller, um, wasn't really around before that time, so the pieces weren't written for this in, for this instrument. And this is actually the instrument we 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 would we would like to hear. Um, now, if you do use a smaller trumpet, like a piccolo trumpet, I would my opinion would be that we're not looking for somebody who can play Brandenburg II, which is incredibly high, or anybody or people running around doing pyrotechnics on a piccolo trumpet. What we're looking for is the same thing as I said about the Morris's tune that you played earlier. Is what we're looking for is, is a sound and playing a musical phrase. Um, now, you know, that's a beautiful big sound for a piccolo trumpet. Um, that's quite hard to achieve in itself. So if you do go down the road of playing a smaller trumpet, which many of you will, uh, uh, I mean, the Haydn trumpet concerto, the Hummel trumpet concerto are obvious choices of the older things. Um, if you do play on a, a smaller trumpet, we're still looking, it's the sound um, and the quality of the sound that we're looking for. I hope you've enjoyed this little little session that we've had and um, hope it'll be useful for you in the future. And in the meantime, um, keep listening to all different styles.
not just uh, symphonic styles, but uh, jazz styles, big bands, anything at all. And um, you can learn a lot. I'm 73 and I'm still learning. Cheers. <laughs>